Hello, welcome to this songwriting tips lesson. I want to show you a chord choice that John Lennon used when writing the song In My Life by the Beatles. Before we begin, shout out to my mom for making me this Hawaiian shirt. Thanks, mom. With that out of the way, let's dive right into it. What do you think the next chord's going to be when you hear this chord progression? Probably this. This is that famous, famous, infamous chord progression, one, five, six, four, that people talk about. Every pop song uses it, and oh, wow, you can mash up a thousand songs, and they all use that chord progression. One, five, six, four. The song In My Life uses those first three chords and then uses a unique special chord that I want to highlight here that you can keep in mind for your own songwriting. One, five, six, funky alternative chord. This funky alternative option is an E7 chord, E dominant seven with the flat seven in the bass. So it is third inversion E7. You can actually play this same voicing by playing this over here, first finger on the third string, first fret play the top four strings. You might know the chord E7 like this, where you lift off the third finger so you have an open D. And then if you just don't play the bottom two strings, you get that voicing. So let's hear it with that voicing. What I love about this is that the bass note goes up a half step from the sixth chord. And then traditionally an E7 chord would resolve to A and that's exactly what happens. And then in the song it does, goes A minor and then back to the one chord in E. So the song is in A uh, originally in the recording and I'm showing it to you in E and I'm actually gonna walk through several examples in different keys because that is the best way to truly understand what's going on in a song and not get married to what we think of the chord name as. Instead, we're thinking of the functionality of the chords and where it exists in the tonality. So let's walk through that and you'll see how I go about teaching and internalizing a song, especially with a new, interesting, uh, more unusual chord choice. We want to be really familiar with how it works so we can use it creatively on our own. If you're not already thinking of chords as numbers within a key, I would make that a top priority in your music study. It's going to make everything else you do so much easier. So in these examples, I'm gonna walk through the menu of chord options within a key, just within the diatonic major key of each key that I show you so you can see the chord options and then how they're used in the song. So in E, E would be the one chord. F sharp minor would be the two chord. G sharp minor is the three chord. A is the four chord. B is the five chord. C sharp minor is the six chord. And then we have D sharp diminished, very rarely used in songwriting and pop songs, the seventh chord of a key. So the seven chord is diminished, but I'll still play them for us. And then we have E again as back to the one. So by going to the E chord with a flat seven in the bass, we are going out of the key. We are taking a note outside of just straight up the, the notes that come from the scale of E major in this case. And that's one of the reasons it's an interesting sounding chord and spices things up a little bit. So here's the song in E. There are places I remember all my life. Okay, we're going to do it in A next. I like to go through the circle of fourths just for five keys, E, A, D, G, and C. That's actually the five keys that you could also say are spelled out in the cage system, C, A, G, E, D, but I like to do it starting on E and then up a fourth for each next key. So A would be the next key. In A, our one chord is A. Our two chord is B minor. Our three chord is C sharp minor. The four chord is D major. The five chord is E. The sixth chord is F sharp minor. And the seventh chord is G sharp diminished triad. And then back to A. 
So here's the progression in A. One, five, six, A over G. So we can see this quite well if you know this normal A shape here, this very common A shape in the open position. And this note here where my pinky is touching is A. Well, this would be the major seven, so this is the flat seven here. So it's an A chord over G. So it's kind of a cool shape to see. So the reason I'm going through different keys is so you can see this in action with different shapes. We came from an F sharp minor, and then we played this half step up, but that's the flat seven of A, so we're playing the A7 over G. And then that's gonna resolve to D, which is our four chord, and I didn't mention this before, but of course you heard it, that the four chord is turned into a minor chord, a minor four chord, before it resolves back to the one in the song. But our main focus is on that funky one chord, dominant seven, third inversion. So here it is in A. This is the original key that it was recorded in. There are places I remember all my life, though some have changed. Next key is going to be the key of D. Our one chord is D, our two chord is E minor, three chord is F sharp minor, four chord is G, five chord is A, and six chord is B minor, that seven chord is C sharp diminished, and we're back to D. So the progression in D goes one, five, six, and we know we're going up a half step, right now it's in our ears now, we know what to do. So, okay, I know I go up a half step there, and then I need to play a D chord. Now I could do this voicing that I did earlier, but this is cool, and, and again, why I'm showing you through different keys, because now we see this in a different context. Like if you know your open D chord, and then you play it where your third finger's free, you can just put that down on the flat seven down there. So now this is familiar. If we think of Sweet Home Alabama. So we have our D power chord, which is implying a D major, and then we have your D with C in the bass. This could be a type of C chord, especially if you don't have that F sharp in there up there uh, on this second fret. Uh, but for our purposes, I'm showing how it's related to the chord that we're working on. So here it is in D. There are places I remember all my life, though some have changed. Next key is G. So G is gonna be our one chord. Uh, two chord is A minor, three chord is B minor, four chord is C, five chord is D, six chord is E minor, seventh chord of the key is F sharp diminished, and back to G. So the progression here is one chord, five chord, six chord, and our featured chord of the day. And so the sixth chord is E minor, so you have this low E down here, and then I know I go up a half step, and I know that that half step up is the flat seven, and so if this is flat seven, then this is major seven, and this is the root, so it's G seven over F, or G over F, uh, or you can think of it as the tonic chord of the key, but as dominant seven, flat seven in the bass, third inversion. Uh, so this is pretty cool because I'm finger picking here and I don't, I'm not strumming. Um, you can play a G chord with only this root here uh, if I play the sixth string, fourth string, third string, and second string. So right now I'm just plucking those four strings. I'm not playing this fifth string and I'm not playing the top string. That's why if you do play those, you have to put those uh, frets down, second fret and third fret. So I'm plucking just this F and then these open three strings that are strings two, three, and four. Okay, and there's our featured chord. So here's the song in G. There are places I remember all my life, though some have changed. All right, last key I want to show it to you in. We're going to do this key of C. In the key of C, the one chord is C. The two chord is D minor. The three chord is E minor. Four chord is F. Five chord is G. Six chord is A minor. Seventh chord of the key is B diminished. And 
go back to C. Okay, so the progression here is one, five, six. Now, I could have made this comparison earlier, but this is the key that Let It Be is recorded in, and so it is a great thing to compare it to because Let It Be actually does that expected chord progression. <laughs> Right? So there's Paul McCartney and here's John Lennon. It's interesting, it actually goes to that four chord, it just delays it by giving us this tension chord first, giving it a little spiciness. So our special chord here is a great one to visualize in this key because if you take an open C chord, you can see, okay, well there's the root, so the flat seven is going to be on this first fret here. So you want to keep the other two notes. I have to rearrange my fingers, but you can see it as related. Here's a C chord, and then here's that flat seven in the bass. Nice crunchy sound. In context, you know, it really serves functionality to give you that switch around and then resolving to the four chord. On its own, just, hey, here's a chord. Pretty funky sound. So here it is in C. There are places I remember So, two big takeaways, my friends. One, learn your chord numbers in a key. The one chord, the two chord, the three chord. Especially in these five keys, I really recommend. I hope you can see how helpful it could be to work on the same song or the same progression or the same idea in at least these five keys because you'll start to really see and hear and feel the functionality of it instead of just some sort of memorization of a shape. So that's another takeaway, which is playing in multiple keys. And of course, our main point was learning about that one chord. So think of it as a half step up from the sixth chord. If this is my sixth chord, a minor chord, dun, that note's gonna be the flat seven of a chord. And then you can go wherever else you want after that. I want you to have this as a tool for as an interesting chord you can use when you are writing progressions, writing songs, getting creative, looking for an interesting twist, something to do that's not totally a normal sound for yourself, maybe something that doesn't sound like the so other song you just wrote, because I know we all struggle with that sometimes. So just wanting to give you some options and understand how it works. Hope you enjoy practicing that, and I will see you in another video in the future. Thank you.